Al Avila and Patricia Hernandez have been talking to us about how important it is for banks and bank employees to comply with internal processes and systems to not only protect the bank and bank customers, but also to protect themselves. Now, what would you suggest? How can employees protect themselves? Know their customers, understand their customers' business, know the business that flows through the institution, be aware of the bank's policies and procedures, but most importantly, perhaps, is communications. Communications is essential. Be aware that everything you write, everything you say, whether it's in an email or a memorandum, can be subject to review by a regulator. You need to be very careful with this because the things you're saying, the things you're putting in, in writing, may be taken out of context when a regulator reviews them. So be very careful with the things you say. I'm not suggesting that you not put things in writing. What I'm suggesting is you need to be very careful what you say and how you say it. Phrases like, the BSA policy says I have to do this, or I am monitoring this account because BSA rules require it. These are not examples of a culture of compliance. What do you mean by that? Al, I think I can clarify your point a little further. I was involved in a, in a bank where they wanted to close the account of a very influential customer, and they needed some support for it. So they wrote in an email that the OCC wanted them to close this customer's account. When the OCC came in to examine the institution, they looked at that email and they pulled it out and said, you see, your institution doesn't have a culture of compliance. They are only saying they want to close accounts because we're telling them to, not because that's what should be done or because your own systems are telling you that that's what should be done. The regulators are looking at these emails and communications in a vacuum. They don't have the benefit of the background. They're not going to pull you in and ask you questions. They're simply going to read them and interpret them as they want. What else would show a culture of compliance? Well, another very important way is to understand the business uh, that's flowing through your institution and to understand your customers. An employee has to know its customer. It has to understand the business of the customer and the business flowing through the institution. And this is particularly true when you're dealing with complex structures. You need to be very sensitive, very sensitive with respect to structures that may be viewed as tax evasion. I believe that regulators are going to be much more proactive, much more sensitive to these complicated structures, looking for those types of situations. And finally, I think employees need to take in the knowledge and the training that the bank gives them in order to ensure that they, all of the activities they engage in are to prevent the bank from being involved in illegal activity. It's all about a culture of compliance. The regulators are looking for, they're expecting to see a culture of compliance, and it's all about the people. It begins with the people, it ends with the people. Those talented professionals of the institution, those very important resources, all the way from the teller to the chief executive officer, those are the professionals that have to establish that culture of compliance. Thanks, Al. Patricia? This concludes our interview with Al Avila and Patricia Hernandez from the law firm of Avila, Rodriguez, Hernandez, Mena, and Ferry. The firm specializes in all aspects of banking, including regulatory issues. We hope you gain more insight on bank regulatory matters and why adhering to BSA compliance is so important. Thanks for viewing.